Adina, I did a doctorate in uh, neuroscience, neurophysiology in particular, in the hopes I'd understand how the mind works. Uh, I'm not sure I made any progress at all, but that was many decades ago. So I come to you as, as a new friend and ask you with uh, doctorates in, uh, in not only neuroscience but philosophy, uh, how do you make a mind out of a brain? And I, I really understand how the brain works. I think one thing you have to do is go into philosophy <laughs> <laughs> because it's still too hard in neuroscience to do that. Um, but we, we are getting at least a sense of how small collections of neurons can cooperate or interact in such a way to make possible more complex functions, and those can combine to make complex more complex functions. So I think... Um, the general picture of uh, sort of the functionalist picture of how we get complex activity that we call mental activity. It is mental activity, but it arises out of the operation of relatively simple physical parts. So what are some categories that we want to, to explain this general word mind? What, what, do we, what do we need? What are some general categories? Uh, we need uh, memory. We need uh, some sort of a sensory uh, uh, yeah, um, perception. Uh, perception. We need some sort of a processing associative activities. We need some sort of a of a of a of a, uh, a future. Motor. Uh, I yeah, think so, you so, need so, to be embodied output, in some, some, some way. Yeah. So. We have now four or five categories, and maybe you yeah. can make a few more. But you're not going to have, in terms of broad category, you're not going to have 100. You may have, I don't know, seven broad categories, 10. I don't know. How many? Well, I've never counted. Okay. But, but yeah, broad categories, maybe only two or three. Okay. Uh, but then you need a lot more finer categories. And, uh, of uh, those. I think okay. you know, we need to continually functionally parcelate what we're trying to understand in order to, to see how things interact. Um, and so how, how has your um, journey in philosophy, as it were, helped you combine with the neuroscience to understand what the mind is? I wouldn't go so far as to say that I understand what the mind I said is. Help. But I said help. Make progress. <laughs> I guess I feel like I understand a little better in some sense. Although in well, a lot of ways, the way I think about mind isn't that different than the way I think about computers. It's just a very different kind of architecture. So you believe in, uh, in a, a computational theory of mind. Can I say that? Can I, can yeah, I, can broad, I, broadly can, speaking. Can, I, can yeah. I pigeonhole you that way? I, I think I would allow you to do that. Uh, okay, good. I'm making progress. <laughs> so if, if I can do that, can I say that at some time in the future, in principle, mm -hmm. is it possible for a non-biological uh, entity to be conscious? I would say so. Okay. I don't have any idea of how that would come to happen or what it would require, but um, did you see Watson, the IBM supercomputer, beat everybody on Jeopardy last year? Sure. That demonstration was, was really eye-opening. One thing that we haven't understood well enough is what just lots of statistics a statistical engine can really accomplish. And certainly with very clever algorithms, but the more statistics you have, the more data that you can manipulate, the less powerful your algorithm has to be because you're just sorting through all these hash tables or however you, 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 you do that. But it's not, well, Watson wasn't a lookup table. And the question is, are we any different? So well, I, I'm not convinced that Watson isn't some kind of proto-cognitive system. Uh, he, you know, he can't do everything we can do, but we can't do what he can do well, that's for sure. either. But I, I can't multiply five numbers in my head, but, a, but a, a, a calculator from 1960 can do that. Yeah, but I don't think that Watson operates on that, no, I'm saying, on but, that level either. Right, right. Uh, and so the question is, are we an even more fancy statistical engine with a broader range of outputs and maybe some interesting recursive function that but it doesn't that, seem to, that we have the processing power to to do what's required for a statistical engine i mean some of that we no, do but we do our brains have more or way more capability than watson does 
It doesn't have the clock speed, but we're, we've got a whole lot more com computational no, elements. We certainly have, in terms of the 100 billion neurons and 10,000 connections and, and, and millisecond activity, there's certainly a, a lot of opportunity there, for sure. Yeah. The thing that was, that was amazing about Watson is that although he had access to the web in order to train himself up... I thought it was a she. <laughs> I guess I never asked. <laughs> because Watson trained herself up on the web, uh, but she performed completely offline, right? right so right, everything right. that right. that she answered was encoded in yeah, yeah. in this right. computer. She didn't, she didn't cheat. Our brains are more powerful than that computer, at least in terms of the number of states that we can represent. Right. Right. And so I'm not convinced that that wasn't getting at something really fundamental about how we code up the world. So, so we, we have you as a computational theory of mindist, uh, a, a functionalist, saying that basically if you can reproduce the function, it doesn't matter where or how, you get the same effect. Yeah, yeah. So they're similar but not exactly the same. So you're a computationalist and a functionalist. Uh, but are you not then an identity that what the mind is is what's happening in the brain? Are you an identity kind of person? I think that certainly I'm a token identity person in that given any mental state, it's identical with that physical state that's instantiating it. So what do you then do with the phenomenal part of that? Well, that's the part I don't have an answer to. Uh, but, so but that's I, like saying, I, you know, it's, not, it's like saying I, I don't understand 99.99%, but I understand 001%, so that's why I'm in. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't think so. I think, uh, I don't think there are any alternatives out there, first of all. So I don't know what it is about the way our brains operate that makes it the case that we have phenomenal experience. Um, but I don't think that there are any other things to look at except the way our brains operate. So, but, but that's a that's kind of an inverse way of thinking by saying it. I, I can't think of anything how it happens. Therefore, what, what I know exists, which are the brain neurons, electrical activity. So it has to be yeah. that. It has to be something, something that, yeah, it is could, generated it, it from that activity. It but, could be something so far beyond our understanding of the physical world as quantum physics was in the 17th century. And that's purely physical. I don't have to it's have. True. I mean, it could be due to quantum effects. I always hate the. No, I, the... I, I, I hate that too. I hate the quantum effects too. Even, even maybe true. Who knows? <laughs> but I do hate it. It's... But what I'm, I'm saying something different. I'm saying that it could be something in the physical world so different from what we know today as quantum physics was to something in the 16th century. Right. So I, that's why I don't rule that out in principle. But you seem to. No, I, I, mean, I don't think so. I think that. Uh... Well, to what say that, that is is going to end up being what our science tells us about. So, but it'd be such there, a, such an enlarged uh, um, uh, approach to science that it would be radically different than anything we know today. That that it, it it would not be a representation of the brain state being exactly identity three lines equal to the to the mind state. But you're saying it, it is. I'm, I'm putting my bet on it because it's been a really successful strategy so far, uh, not because I have any inside information that you don't have access to. What I would most like to know and what I have actually not really spent any time studying because I have no idea how to get at it. You it's, and everyone It's else. really hard. Yeah, I've seen smarter people than me not get anywhere, so I figure I'll leave it to them and feel like I've missed the boat when they figure it out, but it would be great if someone would figure it out. Yeah, don't hold your breath on that one. <laughs> yeah.